Okay, so you know how sometimes managing software on Linux, it can be a bit of a, well, a bit of a struggle. You wrestle with dependencies and different distributions do things their own way and keeping track of security updates. It's like a whole other job sometimes. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely can be a bit of a mixed bag, right? Like on, on one hand, Linux is amazing because it's so flexible and open, but that can also make things a bit tricky when you want to install stuff or update it or just make sure everything is working smoothly across different systems. And and that actually, that is a perfect segue to what we're looking at today. We've got uh, the release notes for the newest Deepin OS alpha release. And, and it looks like they are trying to solve some of these, like these core problems in a really interesting way. Yeah, this isn't just like a, a little update here and there. You know, this is like a <laughs> like a fundamental shift in, in how they're thinking about the, the whole software experience on Deepin. So as always, what we want to do in this deep dive is like break down what's actually important, you know, what are the big changes? What problems are they trying to solve? And what does it all mean for us as Linux users? Right, exactly. So let's jump right in. Let's start with this uh, this thing called Linapps. Linapps. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is a big one. So basically, Deepin, they've developed this, this brand new software package management tool. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they really are aiming it at those like, those classic Linux problems we were just talking about, you know, the, the dependency hell, the the fact that every distribution does things a little differently and, and of course, always keeping security top of mind. So how does it actually work? Like what's what's the magic behind Linapps that makes it different? So it's pretty cool, actually. What they're doing is, is they're creating this like this self-contained environment for every application. They use these mechanisms called user namespace and C group. Hmm. And basically what that does is it isolates the app's runtime from the, the main operating system. Ah, so it's kind of like each app is living in its own little like bubble or container. Exactly. Yeah, container. That's a great way to put it. So like, you know, if an app needs a specific version of a library or something, you can have that in its little Linapps bubble without messing things up for other applications. Oh, so that solves like the the classic, you know, I install this app and suddenly half my other apps break because of a dependency conflict. Exactly. That's yeah. a, that's exactly the problem they're trying to solve. And they're also like bundling commonly used libraries like Qt right into the environment so developers don't have to worry about whether the stuff their app needs will be there or not. That makes a lot of sense. And and I see here it also says they're even letting you have like multiple versions of the same app installed at the same time. Oh yeah, that's a that's a really cool feature. So you could have, you know, like an older version of a program that you need for a specific project, but then also have the newest version installed and they wouldn't conflict with each other. That's that's really neat. So what about this one architecture, one build model? What is that all about? Yeah. So so think about it right now, developers, they have to package their software for for tons of different distributions, each one with its own little quirks and formats and everything. It's a lot of work. This one architecture, one build idea mm -hmm. is basically saying, hey, what if you could just build it once and it would run on any system that supports Linapps? That would be huge for both developers and users, I bet. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Less work for developers means they can focus on, you know, making great apps. And for users, it means you're more likely to find the app you want, no matter what distro you're using. And it looks like they're not just limiting it to Deepin either. It says here they're already supporting UOS, Open Euler, and even Ubuntu. Yeah, they're they're really going for it. It seems like they they want Linapps to be like a universal solution for Linux, not just a Deepin thing. Mm -hmm. And they're also supporting a bunch of different hardware platforms too, not just by 86, but also ARM and even Lungark. Okay, now this next part, this is what I call like the user-friendly feature of the century. They're making Linapps able to like convert existing packages, dev files, app images, flat packs into Linapps packages with like one click. I know, right? That's yeah. that's going to make things so much easier for people to, to switch over. Yeah. You don't have to wait for every single app to be repackaged. You can just convert the stuff you're already using. And of course, you need a place to find all these Linapps apps. So they're also launching a Linapps store. Makes sense. Yeah. A central store where you can find and install everything that's that's key for any package manager. It even says here that by the end of next year, they're aiming to have over 1,000 apps in the Linapp store. So they're really putting their money where their mouth is. Yeah, it sounds like they're they're serious about making this happen. Okay, so Linapps is, is clearly a, a, a big deal. But let's look at some of the other improvements they've made. Um, it says here they've also done some optimization work on the deep and solid operating system itself, specifically to speed up app installations. Always a good thing, right? Nobody likes waiting around for an app to install. Definitely. And it looks like they've also tweaked the way system backups work. They're no longer automatically triggered during app installations. That's smart. 
Doing a backup at the same time as installing something can really bog down your system, so this should make things a lot smoother. Now onto the installer itself. It looks like they've bumped up the recommended EFI partition size to 512 milby. Yeah, that makes sense. But with systems getting more complex and people maybe dual booting with other operating systems or using fancy bootloaders, mm -hmm. you need a bit more space in that EFI partition. And they've also spent some time making the installer like more user friendly with with clearer messages for when things go wrong and just better wording overall. Yeah, it's all about those little details, right? Especially for people who, who might not be super familiar with installing operating systems. All right, so let's talk DDE, the Deepin desktop environment. It looks like they've gone through and, and basically redesigned and improved a ton of different modules, everything from personalization options like wallpaper and screen savers to power management, sound, Bluetooth, default apps, notifications, mouse and touchpad settings, display settings. It's a really long list. So instead of going through every single item, what are some of the like the highlights or the overall themes you're seeing in these DDE updates? Well, I think that the main takeaway here is that they've really put a lot of effort into making the whole desktop experience better. Like they're not just focusing on one or two things. They're really looking at everything that users interact with on a daily basis and trying to make it more polished, more customizable and just generally more enjoyable to use. Yeah, and it's it's the little things too, like they've added support for solid color wallpapers where you can set your own custom color values. Yeah. I mean, that might seem minor, but it gives you a lot more control over how your desktop looks. And you can even customize the the time ranges for the eye comfort mode now. Well, that's nice. So you can have it automatically adjust the screen color based on your own schedule. They've also added some cool little animations in the touchpad settings to show you how the different gestures work. Oh, yeah, that's really helpful. Yeah. Sometimes those gestures can be a little hard to figure out just from reading a description. So having a visual demo makes a big difference. And for the power users out there, they've added more customization options for three and four finger gestures. Nice. Yeah. That's something that a lot of people have been asking for. They've also got this new thing called the Smart Mirror Source module, which lets you choose where your system updates come from. That's good for reliability. Yeah. You can pick a mirror that's closer to you or one that's known to be really stable. And they've even fixed a specific issue where sometimes audio output would be missing in certain situations. It's good to see that they're paying attention to those like those little bugs that can be really annoying. Definitely shows that they're they're listening to user feedback. Yeah. OK, this next one is a bit more technical, but it's a big change. They've switched over to using Pipewire as the default audio framework. Yeah, Pipewire is a much more modern system for handling audio, and it should lead to better performance, lower latency and support for a wider range of devices. And last but not least, they've made it easier to do backups and restores by adding a dedicated entry for that in the system settings. Always a good thing to make those essential tasks more accessible. All right, let's move on to the Deepin browser. They have released a new version that focuses on stability, which is always good news. Yeah, the stable browser is a happy browser. And they've also added a dark theme and made some improvements to the interface. Dark themes are all the rage these days. They've also made the browser work better on touch screens, which is important as more and more devices are adding touch support. Yeah, you got to make sure the experience is good on all kinds of hardware these days. Now, there is one important thing to note. The browser won't automatically upgrade to this new version. So they've given users a command to run if they want to update. It's all l upgrade org.deepin.browser. Good to know. So anyone who's eager to try out the new browser can just run that command. All right, let's talk AI. It looks like Deepin is really pushing forward with their UOS AI stuff. They've added support for configuring DeepSeek online models. Yeah, so that basically means users can now connect to these cloud-based AI services and, and do all sorts of cool stuff like advanced searches, natural language processing, all that good stuff. And even more exciting, they've made it possible to install the DeepSeat 6.7b local model with just one click. That's huge. Before, if you wanted to run a local AI model, it was kind of a pain to set up, but now they've made it super easy. Yeah, this could really open up a lot of possibilities for people who want to do AI stuff offline or who are concerned about privacy. Definitely. And it could lead to some really interesting applications that we haven't even thought of yet. Okay, now on to some more everyday apps. They've added a bunch of new features to the language notepad and the text editor. They both now support voice dictation, text to speech, and even transcribing text from voice input. Those are all really useful features. Yeah. Especially the voice dictation. That could be a game changer for people who have trouble typing or who just prefer to talk. And lastly, 
a small but handy improvement. They've made it so that subsystem information is now displayed right in the terminal title bar. Yeah, that's great for people who work with multiple subsystems. They can always see at a glance which one they're currently in. So, wow, we covered a lot of ground today. It's clear that the Deepin team has been really busy with this alpha release. Yeah, they've made a ton of changes, both big and small. It's really impressive. So what are like the, the key takeaways here? What do people need to know about Deepin 25 Alpha? Well, I think the biggest thing is that they're really focused on making the whole system more functional, more customizable, and more user-friendly. Yeah, and they're not afraid to experiment with new ideas like that Linapps Package Manager, which could potentially be a game changer for the Linux world. Definitely. It's clear that they're not content with just the status quo. Mm -hmm. They're really trying to push things forward and, and come up with innovative solutions to some of the, the long-standing challenges in the Linux ecosystem. And all of this is really about making the Linux desktop a better place for everyone, whether you're a developer, a power user, or just someone who wants a smooth and reliable computing experience. Exactly. They're trying to build a desktop that's powerful and flexible, but also easy to use and accessible to everyone. So as you're thinking about all of this, I want you to consider this. With Linapp starting to gain some traction and, and aiming for that cross-distribution compatibility, what could this mean for the future of Linux applications? Like, how will this change the way apps are di distributed and used? Yeah, that's a great question. It's hard to say for sure, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on. And with local AI becoming more and more accessible, how will that change the way we interact with technology in our daily lives? I think we're just starting to scratch the surface of what's possible with AI, and I'm really excited to see what the future holds. Yeah, it's a really exciting time to be a Linux user. Absolutely. There's so much innovation happening right now, and, and Deepin is definitely at the forefront of it. Well, that's all the time we have for today, but we'll be back soon with another deep dive into the latest and greatest in the world of Linux. Busy then. Bye, everyone. Bye.